Welcome to Micro Terrors. Scary stories for kids. Where it's always the spooky season. Full of chills. Thrills. And spine tingling spooks. Micro Terrors are family friendly frights for those ages 8 and up. And while our stories are for younger ears, we are still talking about things that go bump in the night, and some children may not be able to handle what others can. Parental consent is recommended. Now, for tonight's Micro Terror. Rattleclink the Spider Jars by Tom Levine Rory avoided the basement. Any sensible person would. Basements were A. Dark, B. Spooky, and C. Possessed of ancient spirits with spectral pincers desirous of nothing more than snipping off the heads of little boys. That's why Rory avoided the basement. Well, that and his father's collection of spiders. Rory had been down in the basement exactly one time, when his older brother Timothy it's always an older brother in these scenarios, invited him down for candy. Candy! The sweet lie of candy! And Rory had fallen for it. Granted, he'd been only six at the time and Timothy ten. Timothy had spent many years finding out where father hid the key to the basement door, which he always kept closed and locked. Father had begun his itch-inducing hobby not long after mother passed. As it happens, from the bite of a black widow spider. Mother had not been well in the first place, and local physician Dr. Joshua opined that this long illness of hers, undiagnosed, played a role in the spider's fatal bite. Rory, who bore his mother's coal black hair and serious blue eyes, was only three at the time. Seven, now, he had precious few memories of her. She'd spent most of her time in bed in the upstairs extra bedroom, the very same bed in which she died. Timothy said, outside of father's hearing, that her illness was Rory's fault, that somehow his infant body had poisoned her during birth and the Black Widow had come along to finish the job. Sometimes Timothy smiled when he made these claims, but other times the words came from a grim slit of a mouth. At those times, Rory believed his brother's accusations. A week after her mother's death, Rory heard his father cry out. At first, he assumed the cry was one of grief. Father made such sounds many times after she passed. Then father came bounding down the stairs, holding a mason jar in both hands before him. Got one, he cried, passing Rory with a glance. Within the clear glass, Rory saw a long-legged and rather hairy specimen of the sort that inhabited the outbuildings. Wolf spiders, everyone called them, though there were clearly multiple species falling under this broad moniker. Even as he stared at it, the creature leaped against its prison. Rory had shrieked and covered his eyes. While in this pose, Rory heard, rather than saw, his father opening the basement door, rushing down it, and giving another cry of triumph. When he heard the door close once more, Rory lowered his arm. He'd never seen Father quite so exultant. There, he'd said, that's one. Uh, well, what are you going to do with it? Rory asked, voice tremulous. Father fixed him with a fanatical glare. Keep it and watch it die, the way that they made me watch your mother die. He raised a thick finger and pointed it at Rory's nose. You or your brother see any more, any kind, anywhere, you grab them, or come get me and I'll grab them. All right, son? Rory nodded, knowing the gesture was a lie. He had no intention of coming anywhere near an arachnid, not after watching how his mother passed. Her pain. He remembered that more than he remembered any hugs or bedtime stories. Before the bite, Mother had mostly been weak and sleepy. After it, she screamed. At all hours of the day and night, 
she screamed. Rory, peeking in fascinated horror through the crack in the door as Father and Dr. Joshua tried to treat her, watched her arms, legs, and abdomen mercilessly constrict. Then came the endless vomiting, which frightened Rory more than her clenched muscles. The symptoms went on for hours while Father gripped his hair, shouted at the doctor, tried holding Mother's hand. All of it worthless. From the capture of that first wolf spider, Father kept the basement door locked. He did not, he told the boys, want them to accidentally knock over one of the jars and risk letting one of the skittering beasts free. But aren't they dead? Timothy had asked, blunt as always. Father had grinned. Not yet. They'll die slowly, very slowly. He bought canning jars by the flat, built shelves with fresh lumber, stacked the jars side by side by side. The more his collection grew, the more he spent his free time there, grinning and eventually muttering. By the time Timothy pulled his older brother with candy routine, father had amassed fifty jars, no, a hundred, each with its own inhabitant. There were two shelves full, one set on the right and one set on the left. The shelves started just a few feet beyond the flat area at the base of the wooden steps. I've got fudge, Timothy told Rory a year ago, almost to the day. Want some? It's in the basement. Rory's little brother instincts kicked in. Why the basement? To keep it cool, of course. Rory frowned, thinking, A, there was a perfectly good icebox in the kitchen, and B, where would Timothy have gotten fudge without him knowing? This latter question he prepared to ask, but Timothy had already shrugged and swaggered toward the basement door, which gleamed an array of afternoon sun from the kitchen windows. Timothy brandished a brass key and deftly unlocked the door to Rory's thunderstruck amazement. His brother then sauntered down the steps, flicking on the light at the top of the stairs as he went. He didn't even have to dangle the promise of candy again. Rory followed him out of his own sheer curiosity. Down the wooden staircase, down to the shelves where the spider jars stood in perfect rows. Well, where's the candy? Rory had asked and licked his lips for more than one reason. Over there, Timothy pointed at the back wall where it's coolest. And, fool that he was, Rory walked the aisle between the spider jars, trying to keep his gaze fixed on the dark, damp stone wall and not at the row upon row of arachnids waiting to pounce upon him. Rory reached the wall where it was darker. He searched the shadows. I don't see it. Timothy gripped one shelf and gave it the easiest shake. The jars rattled and clinked. Rory flinched. Don't! Can you imagine? Timothy said with another shake. Rattle clink. If these all came down at once, crash! Rory flinched a second time and sent a terrified glance at the nearest jar. In it, a black widow moved sluggishly. Timothy tapped a jar. The monster inside responded immediately, jumping against the smooth glass. Still alive. I wonder how long they last in there. I, I don't know, Rory said. Where's the candy? Timothy raised an eyebrow. Wait right there. Despite every instinct he had to the contrary, Rory waited. Right there. Timothy rattled the shelf one more time, rattle clink, before racing up the stairs and shutting off the light. No! Rory shrieked. What if they all fell right now? Timothy's voice came out of the pitch black. You'd be trapped, he went on, trapped with all these spiders. Rory suddenly needed the washroom very badly. Turn the light on, Timothy! You know it's your fault, right? What you did to mother. No, I didn't! He heard Timothy's stealthy steps on the wooden staircase. That spider wouldn't have killed her if you hadn't made her so weak. Stop! Stop! Stop it! Rory's bone marrow filled with ice water as Timothy's footsteps quieted, but then were replaced by the rattle-clink of the jars. 
I bet these bigger ones can knock their jars off if they wanted to, Timothy said. Rory heard Timothy was closer now, but he couldn't make his feet work. They'd just bang up against the side of the jar until it fell right over. Rattle clink, rattle clink, rattle clink. Rory felt his bladder wanting to let go, felt a scream unlike any other build in his lungs, terror crawling over his skin like a hundred, Timothy, please! Timothy sighed in the blackness. Rory heard his footsteps on the stairs again. The light popped on, blinding him. With a sneer of disgust, Timothy unleashed a volley of insults at him, words Timothy would never dare say a father was around. They all meant the same thing. Coward. At the time, Rory didn't care. He bolted up the stairs and straight to the washroom, muttering harsh words of vengeance he'd have one day on his older brother. But he didn't tattle. Father went on collecting his spiders, ignorant to both Timothy's knowledge of the basement key and the terrorizing of his little brother. The collection grew. For Rory, dreams of revenge slowly faded to dreams of his mother's death and that he wished he'd never seen it. Now, a year later, there stood Timothy, brass key in his hand, faint smile on his lips tempting Rory again. Father was in the city and would be for some time. Rory had just come in from playing in the garden. Summer had arrived early and sweat ran down his legs and between his bare toes as he wiped his feet on the mat inside the kitchen door. Timothy made no pretense this time. I'll give you a dollar to walk to the end of the basement and back. You don't have a dollar, Rory said, thinking of the candy. Timothy pulled a silver dollar coin from his pocket and brandished it. See? Rory took a step closer, wondering if it could be faked. Where did you get it? It doesn't matter where I got it, Timothy said. What matters is what I want to spend it on. What's that? My little brother not being a coward. The words had an instant effect. Rory scowled and marched over, reaching for the coin. Timothy deftly raised his hand away. Uh, 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 you have to do it first. Rory crossed his meek little arms. Just to the wall and back? Yup. With the light on? Of course. I wouldn't want you to crash into the spider jars and get hurt. Just touch the wall? Yep. Only you can't run. You have to walk. Timothy opened the basement door while Rory contemplated the offer. He had no illusions about what was on Timothy's mind. He'd reach the wall and poof, out would go the light. So the question wasn't whether or not he could walk to the wall and back. The question was, could he walk back in the dark, between the two shelves of arachnids? Timothy opened the door and stepped aside, with exquisite Big Brother smarm on his face. Rory, surprising himself, grinned back. Fine, he said, and stepped boldly onto the first step and flicked on the light. He was thrilled to see the surprise on Timothy's face. Even if he didn't follow through with his promise of the dollar, that expression was enough of a victory to encourage Rory down the stairs. The wood felt splintery beneath his feet. This bravado quickly evaporated when he reached the basement floor. The two shelves stretched out before him and seemed to somehow grow longer, the wall farther as he stood still. Just remember, Timothy called, they can knock themselves off the shelves any time. Rory didn't believe him, mostly, but used his brother's voice to motivate himself. Just walk to the wall and back, he thought. Go. He took a step. The light went off. Rory tensed. The light came back on. <laughs> Just kidding, Timothy teased. Rory didn't even bother looking back. Responding would only encourage Timothy. Instead, he took a step, then another, eyes fixed on the back wall, just as he'd done during the candy trick. Just keep walking, he thought. Just keep walking. 
One million eyes followed his every movement. He felt each one glaring. They hated him. They hated his father for trapping them here, and by extension, hated Rory. They wanted to bite. And venom. Feast. Rattle clink. Rory froze, then turned his head. Timothy! Timothy was outlined by light in the doorway at the top of the stairs. What? Keep going, you're almost there. But did you hear that? Hear what? Rory snapped his mouth shut and moved quickly toward the wall. Walk, Timothy reminded him. Rory nearly didn't listen, but the silver dollar glinted in his mind, and he slowed. The spiders watched. Rattle clink. Rory panicked as he reached out for the wall and touched it. The stones were cool. Taking a relieved breath, he spun to face the stairs. The light went out. The door closed. Timothy from the other side of it laughed. Rory's internal organs shrank and shriveled inside him. Knew it, he thought. Timothy! His older brother only went on laughing. The sound was demonic. Rory clenched his teeth and hands. Forward, he thought. Just move forward. He took a step. Easy, no problem. Another, then another, sliding his bare... Rory stopped. Bare feet! I'm not wearing shoes! Why didn't I put on shoes? Rattle clink. Oh, no! He took another shuffling step. The dirt floor felt cool beneath his soles, but his body felt racked with fever. Just keep going! Just keep going straight! He bumped into a shelf. Rattle clink! Rattle clink! Instinctively, he pulled away, sliding his feet. But in his growing panic, he overestimated and backed into the opposite shelf. The jars of spiders rattled and clinked, louder now. Rory abandoned any want for the money or even to show up his brother. He screamed in the dark, Timothy! His only response was the key turning in the lock. Rory ran. All his primal instincts came to the foray as he shoved away from the shelf and rushed blindly in the direction of the stairs. Or what he thought was the direction. Timothy had blocked the base of the door with something, a towel perhaps, to keep any light from shining. Without this beacon, Rory had no sense of direction. His terror drove him at an angle until he smashed into the other shelf. Rory released a small animal whine as the jars moved. Oh! Rattle clink. He heard the jars sliding across the boards. Then, in the dark, he heard the sound of a thousand breaking jars of glass. Thank you for listening to Micro Terrors. Join us each Saturday for another scary story. For more fun, visit our website at microterrors.com, where we will also have spooky games you can print out and play, like wicked word searches, mysterious mazes, and more. Microterrors.com is also where you can find us on your favorite social media and even send in your own scary story for us to tell. Plus, you'll learn more about our author, Scott Donnelly, who has other horrors for both young and old. I hope you'll join me again soon for Micro Terrors, scary stories for kids. Hey weirdos, be sure to click the like button and subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell so you don't miss future videos. I post videos seven days a week. And while you're at it, spread the darkness by sharing this video with someone you know who loves all things strange and macabre. If you want to listen to the podcast, you can find it at WeirdDarkness.com slash listen.